Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I think I had too much coffee. <laughs> we no. like the energy. Coffee's good. Coffee good. So we decided, because we're back home, we have a little bit more free time than we have for the last several weeks, oh, yeah. that we would do individual recaps for these final two episodes. We're bringing it back. Yeah. I know. We used to do this. Yeah, but it's a little crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. But it's our gift to you. What what gift is it? I don't know how it's much It's a Thanksgiving it. gift. Okay. Pre-Thanksgiving gift. Okay. It's yes. a holiday gift. A holiday gift. Very yeah. good. The holidays have begun. I think November is where the holidays begin, right? I think it usually happens on November 1st, right after Halloween, because then you start hearing... You hear that in every store you go into. Yeah. I have to admit, I like it. I love it. I'm one of those people. I've always loved Christmas music. As a, as a young Jew, I used to feel very sad that, that I couldn't really participate in, in what the, uh, the Christian folk had. But, but here you learned all the songs anyway. I know them all. Do you want to croon for everyone this morning? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> very good. Okay, uh, housekeeping other than the fact that we're clearly at home and very happy to be home, I feel like we're yeah. like vibrating with yeah, excitement. I'm really excited. Shall we get to our overall thoughts on episode 15? So the finale part one, basically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are they? Oh, oh, I thought you were going to give them. Oh, I will admit I was mildly entertained at points in this episode. Yeah, here and there. Yeah, here and there. There was a lot of like, uh, I roll like, are we really going to see this whole other yeah. thing now moments? But in general, you know, they kept me wanting more. I think the bar has been lowered enough that we are now <laughs> trained to be entertained by very little. Oh my God. Sort of like the bar has been heightened for us in a way where we're happy to recap one episode. We're thrilled to do a recap yeah, for one like episode. Yeah, it's like lifting weights. Yeah. We're like, we're like totally swole now with the ability to recap. Are we Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get going. All right, so episode 15 kicks off with more Wells story time. To recap how we got here, and Andy, you said, oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> I kind of couldn't believe that they were doing this right off the bat. Uh, it just really didn't feel like it already felt like we've been so overexposed to every detail of these people on this. Can beach. you not believe that they were doing that? <laughs> Fair. Some highlights of yours, Andy, during this, some quotes of yours were, oh, my God, I forgot Romeo was on the season. Mm. My mom is really into Aaron, by the way. We had a big fight. I wrote, I genuinely feel bad for the editors whose job it is to make a recap of highlights of a season that already felt like a recap. Yeah. It just was like... Tough. Oh, oh, Tough job. Oh. Someone's got to do it. Okay, so back on the beach, finally. The gist is that that night will be the great divide. Hmm. Aaron is heard in the guy's room giving Johnny the golden advice of, I don't know, bro. It's like whatever you want. If you want to get engaged, do it. If you don't, don't. Just like really look into yourself before you do. <laughs> He's like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of the beach. <laughs> oh, no, no, wait. Yo, douche. <laughs> That's... Okay, so that night it is the rose ceremony, a.k.a. the Great Divide. Not much of a divide, really. Mm -mm. It was a bit of a divide. Little. To get things started, Mara says that she's been holding out because of the friendships there, but everyone's coupled up, so she self-eliminates. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think she did the right thing. That's a classy move. She looked great. She did look She good. had an upper arm cuff. Oh, you like that. I like, you know, I want to be the kind of person that could pull off an upper arm cuff. I think you could pull up. A, why wouldn't you You've be able to pull have, off an upper arm cuff? I feel like your your arm needs to be just like, I don't know. You I have just, a tremendous arm. I have an okay arm, but like her, I don't no, know. No, no, your looks, arm is solid. Uh, okay. Anyway, maybe I should explore some upper yeah, arm cuffs. Yeah, do the upper arm cuff. Jesse arrives and says there are an equal number of men to women. So it's time to be honest with themselves. Could they see themselves getting engaged? It's funny when things sort of come to a standstill and they're like, yeah. well, so now you just need to be honest. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, I feel like the show is over now 
And there's no, they don't care what people tell them to do. They can do whatever they want now. Yeah. It's a breakdown, I think. There's a, there's a flaw here. Like oh, the show 100%. doesn't have sway over them anymore. Yeah. It's like when you give two weeks notice at a job and they're like, oh, there's a big morning meeting on Monday. And you're like, you know what? I'm sleeping in late on Monday. <laughs> already on my way out. Well, you're making a good point. I remember the first time I ever saw Paradise was right after my season, actually, because that was the first year of Paradise. Yeah. And I remember when it came to the conclusion and it was just like, well, look deep in your hearts and decide yeah. whether or not you feel serious about this. It's like, that's it. Yeah. You just do whatever you want. Yeah. Right? Jesse also says that there will be no cocktail party, which <gasps> he seems to think people will be appalled by yeah, what who i don't cares? know why the whole thing is a cocktail party now <laughs> they've been separated probably that day and maybe the day before i don't know i think that they tried to probably amp this up so they really missed each other and didn't know where the other stood i guess i don't I know guess, yeah. now as they leave the area i'm not really sure what was going on here maybe they were setting it up for the rose ceremony because it does seem to happen in the same i don't know room rotunda <laughs> rotunda <laughs> Genevieve is already pissed because Aaron is walking five paces ahead of her. Oh, it's out a of bad there. move. Very ungentlemanly move. I, I mean, are we surprised? No. Does Aaron seem like a paragon of gentlemanliness no. and chivalry? No, he does not. No. She gets in her head that Aaron might not give her his rose. And now we finally have that rose ceremony. Michael gives his rose to Danielle, Brandon to Serene. And he said, hopefully I'm going to put a ring on that. Ooh, and you that, and I, what? Oh, we were on the edge of our seats, but no finger was said no, here. No. Johnny to Victoria and Andy, you said, I love you too, Greg. I mean, Johnny. <laughs> and then I said, you know about that? And you said, it's been put in my face on YouTube. Yeah. So we're blaming Dave Neal. And yeah. his very catchy thumbnails for this. And now we're talking about it and I feel bad. Like, I hope that it's not a spoiler. Look, it's not a spoiler if we have no idea what we're talking about. We don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I still don't know. It may be BS. Yeah. It may be a, a, a red herring. So I don't know if it's true. I just know that I saw something that seemed a little questionable. <laughs> Okay, Tyler gives his rose to Brittany. Lots of suspenseful music here, as it's suggested Aaron might not give Genevieve his rose. I mean, and come on. Yeah, the music was all like, da na 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 yeah, Like, really? And Andy, you said, what's the drama here? Aaron gives his rose to Genevieve. There's, ugh. He's such a producer pet. Oh, yeah. Like, he clearly does this. He he does He's what He's having they want. fun with it. Yeah. He's having fun being a legitimate bad guy. Justin gives his rose to Florence, Joey to Shanae. Andy, you felt that Joey seems like the cooler twin. He does, doesn't he? I don't know about that. No? I'm still having a hard time differentiating. Not looks, I mean, looks and personality. I've actually figured it out from personality. Really? Joey's the dominant twin. <laughs> He's the alpha twin. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell them apart by any, I, physically, I have no clue. Yeah. But I know that when I hear Joey talk, he has a little more confidence, a little more swag. Mm. <laughs> Logan now says Kate... And she walks up with a smile. And by the way, I have to point out that they showed shots of them earlier in the rose ceremony where she smiled at him. She yep. had this like closed mouth, upturned corner smile at him. And he was like, it just seemed very reassuring. Yeah, it's like, like if, a no, no tooth Cheshire grin. I have to admit, if I were him, I would assume that that meant that they were on the same page. I also would assume that. So she walks up with a smile and she smiles throughout his entire speech about what they've been through, how he believes in them. And he offers her his rose. And here, before she said anything, I was like, I can picture her turning him down. And Andy, you said it would be on brand. Mm -hmm. And we were right because she says that he accused her of being critical, that he accused her of looking down on him, that he accused her of not being warm enough. But in reality, those were all projections of him onto her. So that's so those are what things he was doing, which I could not disagree with more. Anyway, she said that when Jesse told them to ask themselves if they were happy or in love, the answer for her is no. She knows what she wants and it's not him. She will not be accepting his rose. And Andy, you said, bravo, selling sunset. This just felt so cruel. And rehearsed. Yes, it felt equal parts cruel and equal parts rehearsed. Partly cruel in how rehearsed it was. Yeah, it's demeaning. Yes. It's like you really, really, this is the amount of respect you show for him as a human being. You literally rehearsed a speech that was making him look like an ass. Yeah. And I mean, here's the thing. Did she think it would make him look like an ass? Maybe she knew that he would come out as the sympathetic character. She's not afraid to lean into it. But what gets me is like the intentional pulling out the rug from under him 
thing going on here. The smiling at him at the 90s party, they were making out. They were so lovey dovey. No. You know, they overcame the Gabby Rachel visit, all this stuff. It's like she really set him up to just to really stab him in the back. I think her whole paradise was choreographed. I agree. She came on this show. I said it when she first landed, I was like, she came to play. She did. What I didn't realize is she came to play nasty. Yes. And the whole thing was from beginning to end. It was like, how can I be that person that gets the most attention, that is the most talked about, that is the most polarizing, mm -hmm. and will get me to where I need to get in the TV world? <laughs> Maybe on Selling Sunset. Possibly Selling Sunset. Look, do, do we think this was a great audition? I think she could be a very... We're talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. Mm. She got what she wanted, which sucks. I hate when bad guys win. It happens a lot these days. It does. But Kate won. She's going to get a lot of hate online. But you know what? Kate doesn't care. She doesn't give a fuck. She likes it. She loves it. She's got a thick... Skin. skin. She does. You yeah. can tell. There's a mechanicalness to it. It's so thick that she can't empathize with the pain she's putting on Logan. Yeah. She's like, you you can take it. I if I can yes. take it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Queen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but if she can take it in her mind, she's like, I can take it. I'm just a little girl. Mm. You should be you're a six foot five giant hulking man. You should be able to take this. Ugh. It's a game. This is a TV show. Deal with it. Yeah. But what she doesn't realize is Logan's actually a good guy. And, and Logan was really, there, ironically, Logan, this guy who somehow, I guess now everyone likes Logan. Yeah, they I should. guess now everyone's like, what are you talking about? I didn't say anything bad about Logan. <laughs> like everyone Logan? shut up online. I'm like, who? What, what's wrong with Logan? Everyone's like, hmm. one person I think said that he lied to Rachel. Oh, I don't even want to get, you know no, what? No, no, no. I just have to address it because he didn't lie to Rachel. He was put in a position where he had no choice. He wanted to talk to Rachel at that rose ceremony about pursuing Gabby instead. And then the night was cut short because of Hayden. And Good. you think producers didn't do that on purpose to make Logan look like the bad guy Thank for you. having to accept the rose? So the one thing, the one little thin tree branch they're hanging on to make Logan look like a bad guy is BS. I also think that to say that, to say lying like accepting a rose to me is not lying. It's just not, it's sort of like withholding all of the truth. Like yeah. in that case, then I was lying every time I accepted a rose from one Pablo that I wasn't sure about. Yeah, it's complete BS. It's like, it's like if you find $10 on the street and you pick it up and you put it in your pocket, you're lying. <laughs> So we're clearly Team Logan in this. I don't see how anyone couldn't anyway, be. Anyway, but the point is, yeah. is that Kate assumed that Logan was going to be able to take this. Well, I've known women like this in my life, like friends. And it's like this assumption that a man is somehow tougher. Or well, like it's has sexist. Fewer it's the true definition of, of, I guess, reverse sexism, since usually sexism is yes. put towards the man. Yeah. From, from the man to the woman. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. That way. But it is. It's real sexism mm. because she's assuming that someone can take pain because of their sex. Mm. Whereas men may be even more emotionally sensitive than women when it comes down to it. Well, I actually think they are because they have fewer outlets. It's not as socially yes. acceptable. And it's, also, yeah, exa and it's also more vulnerable for a man to let down his guard emotionally yes. in society yes. than often it is for a woman. Yeah. Women sit around crying about TV shows. Men, you never see men sitting around I mean, crying Look at the way show. Logan handled this. Yeah. He didn't shed one tear. No, he had he, to hold it in. He had to hold it in. Poor oh. guy, right? Okay, so I am almost even hesitant to talk about Kate, even in that way where it's like we're analyzing this from a true perspective of her actually having felt this way, because I really do think she's been an actress this whole time. Yeah. She could have told him this. If she wasn't an actress, if she was just a normal person, even a jerk, mm. if she was just a normal non-actress jerk, yeah. she would have told him before the rosemary, she's like, oh, this is not happening. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I really feel bad, but like, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And then she would have just not accepted the rose yeah. in like a very non-performative way. Why would she make it seem to him like everything's honky dory until that moment, which she gives this prepared speech that totally ruins him? Yeah. She was acting the whole time. The whole time. 100%. Andy, you, you know said- You know who's going to admit that more than anyone? Kate. You think you so? You ask Kate? She's like, damn right I was like, I bet you anything. If we met Kate out- well, first, she'd punch us in the face, probably. <laughs> but after that, we sorted that out. She would say, of course I was acting. What, what, did you think I wasn't? Why wouldn't I be? That's mm. what she would say. I definitely don't think she would take to us. No. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned, it's that if you don't 
If you're not nice to people and you're recaps towards them, then they don't like you forever. <laughs> That's true. But I, I gave it. I did take it. Yes. I gave it. I, I was very into Kate. Yes. I, we want, I, will I say, wanted to like Kate. I wanted to like Kate so much. I was like, she looks like my high school idol, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Oh, yeah. I loved her style on Clayton's season. I loved that she had a low voice. I thought she had like really smart commentary. And it's it. This has been a real like s- disappointment for yeah, me. I feel hard for Kate. Yeah, it was like a real hot romance for a uh, second. Uh, okay, so on Logan's way out, he says Kate did not like what I brought to the table. He says there was nothing he wanted to change about Kate, but he says he lost his sense of who he is trying to please this girl he was really into. I really feel that. Oof. You know what that, and you know what he's talking about. Absolutely. Like, can you imagine the number this would do on your self esteem and your sense of self and your yeah. sense of worth? Absolutely. In her car ride out, meanwhile, Kate says, please, God, bring me a grown ass man with a big dick and a bigger bank account. And scene. Andy, you said, how long did you prep that line? Unreal. You said, Andy, I don't even buy her villainy. She's a fraud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next day, Jesse gathers them and tells them paradise is over and things are about to get tough. Because Paradise Mm -hmm. has been just a cakewalk so far for them. Mm. Not at all traumatizing. Jesse tells them if they can picture an engagement, they'll go on to fantasy suite dates. Otherwise, things are done and they're leaving Paradise. It reminds me of Team America. He's like, I promise I will never die. Yeah? How is it like that? It's just like, I see an engagement. Let's go to the fantasy suite. (laughs) (laughs) What have you got over there, Andy? I've got a bottle of Nutrafol is what I've got. Is that a bottle? Would you call that a bottle? It's definitely a bottle. Really? It's not Is a, a jar. jar? No, a jar is shorter and squatter. <laughs> well, we both have bottles of Nutrafol because we both use Nutrafol and have been for years, long before Nutrafol became something we advertised on Dear Shandy. Yeah. And that's our favorite kind of thing to advertise. Yeah, I could have advertised this five years ago. Yeah. Because I really think it works. I don't know how to say this without sounding like I'm trying to sell the product. <laughs> But you're being I think, a salesman, I'm, Andy. I'm Is this not, your sales No, pitch? I'm taking my hat off. Look, see? see? Do you see my salesman hat? Do you see it on? It's on now, and I'm taking it off because I have seen results. Yeah. And I don't know what else to attribute it to. I really believe that Nutrafol gives you that extra little bump mm-hmm. in the, the texture, the look, and the thickness of your hair. Mm. Am, am I crazy to say that? No, because I've also noticed a difference. And that's because Nutrafol targets the five root causes of hair thinning. And those are... Stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. Ooh, all five memorized, Andy. Good mm-hmm. job. Thank you. Back to, Is your salesman hat back on? <laughs> <laughs> Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended Mm -hmm. hair growth supplement and 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. If I told you, you had an 86% chance of crashing if you got on a plane, would you get on that plane? (laughs) Absolutely not. Okay. (laughs) Case closed. So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support Dear Shandy by going to Nutrafol.com and entering promo code Shandy to get $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Again, that's $15 off at Nutrafol.com, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com and use promo code Shandy. You know, some people have been pointing out the conspicuous lack of Boom Boom Room footage or time around the Boom Boom Room. And I'm wondering why that is, because I don't believe that most of these couples have not been to the Boom Boom Room. Well, maybe there's some some sort of like politically incorrect thing that somehow happened about the Boom Boom Room recently, where like they don't talk about the Boom Boom Room. Mm. Like what happens in the Boom Boom Room stays in the Boom Boom Room. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they're protecting, it's hard to imagine them protecting their contestants, but maybe from the perspective of them getting shamed online or something for going to the boom boom yeah. room after one date or something. I can picture that happening on us. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think Marissa got slut shamed when she oh. went to the boom boom room with Riley last season. Interesting. Oh Interesting. my God, that just came that back to That must have been me. it. That's a great catch. She got a lot of flack for that. And it was like, so now why? They just, like, so now it's all it actually really There's no up. mention of the boom boom room. Yeah. That makes sense. Truly the only ones we've had have been Kira going in with, with, with the vibrator. Sally's vibrator yeah. and Ashley, I and Jared who are married. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so it can be assumed that almost everyone there has been to the boom, boom room, but we will never know about it. Yeah. 
because it's it's no longer uh, appropriate. No longer, that. no longer appropriate. It's so weird. No that longer you, appropriate. I say no longer appropriate. Longer. 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 I think there's a G in there. Yeah, but it's easier to say longer. <laughs> nicer okay so the first couple to chat is obviously brandon and serene he says she means everything to her serene says no one has ever loved her the way he loves her and they make out and stay there mm-hmm. because they're obviously going to get engaged they really say a lot of the same kind of thing in different ways to each other but i will say they do seem perfect for each other yeah they're they're cute i mean they are what they're whatever they are what they are they found each other yeah i think that because a lot of it is just sort of like you mean everything to me no one's ever loved me the way you do like it i think for me the reason i'm not as moved by this as i want to be is because it just feels like the same superlative dialogue going back and forth yeah, if just, hallmark was a language <laughs> they speak hallmark <laughs> yeah, fluently fluently yes yeah. and they found each other yes okay so tyler and Brittany now he says i couldn't have even thought of this any better in my head Mm. He really went out of his way to say of instead of have in that sentence. <laughs> Tyler tells Brittany he loves her. She says she hasn't felt this way in a whole two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't felt this way in two and a half years. <laughs> oh, yeah. You said that's something an eight year old says. Was that the voice of an eight year old? <laughs> that was a little too young. Sorry. That was too much. It's too much. They agree they're not ready to get engaged, but they're going to give it a go in real life. So they leave. I mean, this is cute. Yeah. They do seem like also well matched for each other. I will say this. I don't have any pain seeing her leave with Tyler. (laughs) Oh, wow. You're really over Brittany. Yeah, I'm over all the women I went for. (laughs) Okay. Joey and Shanae talk now. Going into it, Joey says he wants to take this outside of paradise. They sit on a daybed and she immediately starts to bawl. Andy, you started laughing really hard here. Joey says he thought they were on the same page and his voice cracks a few times here. It was, mm, it's amazing. It was really cute. Shanae says she thought she'd be with someone more independent. And he says, I wouldn't, oh, because the context being that he still lives with his parents. Mm. And he says, I wouldn't say I'm not independent because I live with my parents. And Andy, you started laughing hysterically here. <laughs> she accuses him of doing dancing TikToks. <laughs> She says, I'm looking for a man. And he says, what, I'm not a man? He's upset she's bringing up stuff that she had never brought up before. And she says, it's just not there. Andy, you're still laughing throughout this this whole thing. Shanae in her ITM says 24 to 30 is a huge difference. We agree with that. And she's not looking for a TikTok boyfriend. (laughs) So they end things. But he has to wait for a... For Justin before he does his car ride. I'm not wait that long, though. Justin and Florence talk. Justin says they shouldn't pursue things outside of paradise. She agrees and they hug. And then that's... Wait, it. Justin was... No, Joey's the one you thought was the alpha. No, wait a minute. Joey was the one who was complaining about living with his mom doesn't make him... Yeah, an... oh. Joey was with Shanae. Oh, my theory is wrong. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was confused. Well, I will say I just don't feel like we know their personalities much. Justin is the one who was with Flo. Yeah, and he's also the one that went on a date with Mara. (sighs) Are you getting... I'm so confused. Okay, so I was right. It's hard to tell them apart, even personality I may have to take back what I said. I don't remember. I I Now, I literally, right this moment, I don't know who's who anymore. (laughs) Anyway, Joey and Justin share a car ride out because they do everything together. Mm -hmm. And Joey is venting to Justin about what just happened, about how, what, I'm not a man, what, just because we live with our parents. And Justin, in Joey's defense, says, if a man is defined by being family oriented and treating a girl with respect, dude, if she doesn't accept that, you're more of a man than she could ever be. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think he meant for this to be as funny as it was? No. No, Maybe we shouldn't take up. that away because if he meant this, this was really, really deeply funny. There I'm have been a couple sure of contestants over them. the years where yeah. I have found them really funny and they, you know, a lot of people found them funny and they're like, yeah, I meant to be funny. It's like, mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shanae cries in her car ride out and Andy, you called her a confusing character. You said mm-hmm. she reminds me of a Dylan song and the song you said was just like a woman. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you the lyrics? Or you want me to sing you the lyrics? I think everyone wants you to sing the lyrics. Um, <coughs> nah. She takes just like a woman. Yes, she does, and she makes love 
Just like a woman. Yes, she does. And she aches. Just like a woman. But she breaks. Just like a little girl. Oh. That, I mean, that kind of works, actually. Yeah. Good Dylan impression, I think. Uh, yeah. I've done better. You need more rasp. Dylan is one that I have to, sometimes I, I have it, mm-hmm. and sometimes I don't. Speak, and I didn't just Speaking now. of affect, we've talked before about how singing is pitch and affect. Yeah. Oh. That is the ultimate example. The ultimate. Yeah. You know Dylan the second you hear it. And the fact is, if you heard just that sound, yeah. you're like, that's not a good voice. No. But then you hear it, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's... Oh, you know, still don't like. I still you don't it. like Dylan. I, it's his voice is not. What about the lyrics? Well, you don't respect lyrics. You're not I a big know, lyrics person. I, I do respect lyrics. I just first have to like the sound. You know, what I feel like Dylan is. Dylan is like my mistress. Yeah. yeah. I have me and Dylan have a special relationship that you don't have any part of. And you know what? I'm okay with that. You yeah, can and I want to keep it secret because I do things with him that you don't need to know about. <laughs> Okay, so Johnny and Victoria now talk. She says she's never been treated so well. She knows she loves him. He says he loves her too. She says she can see a life with him. She wants to make sure he's in the same place. He says he came with zero expectations and she flipped his whole world upside down and has changed the way he feels about life in general. Hmm. Wow. Damn. He says he can't imagine life without her and they stay together. But the big question mark here, of course, is will they get engaged? Mm. Will he do it, even though she clearly wants him to? Even though, is, does she? I think they both really want to be in a relationship, but they're a little confused about what they're supposed to do right now. Yeah, I feel like they've been told to stick around while other couples in a similar, like, let's stay together state. They need the whole question mark to happen. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just Brandon and Serene. <sighs> <laughs> Could you imagine the whole season just Brandon and Serene? Oh, my God. Some people would love that. No. No? No, because Brandon and Serene, if there's too much of that, then it's like something that's a dessert that's too sweet or too much of a dessert. Question. Do you think a Serene and Brandon reality TV show would get good ratings? Oh, so like a newlyweds show. like they Just, are a, newly- just following them around. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Just following those two around. Just seeing what they do in life. <sighs> can I say no comment? Can I not comment? I can say on- that. Yeah. I think it would do pretty well. Really? Yeah. You don't think it's too sickeningly sweet? Like it, it I just it think- is, but you know what? Americans like sickeningly sweet. They love table syrup. Ah, oh, are you comparing Brandon and Serene's relationship to table syrup yeah. right now? Yeah, it's 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 too sweet, and it's got no character. <laughs> Versus maple syrup being the Canadian. Yeah, might. which is deep in character. Yeah, and there's different It's still types. sweet. It, you get your sweet kick. Yeah, but it's, but it's natural. it's just rich. It's and, one ingredient. Yeah. Maple syrup. It's literally the sap of a maple tree. Yes. Pure. Yes. There's no comparison. No. Meanwhile, table syrup is like caramel number 18 and high fructose corn syrup and a bunch of other ingredients you can't pronounce. Yeah. It's, table syrup is literally the stuff that makes soda in those fountain machines without the soda flavor. Ugh. I think in her best moments, Serene is actually quite funny and, and enjoyable. And I think Brandon is a great guy. Yeah. I've no, believe me, and I'm not just saying that to be patronizing. I yeah. really do believe they're great. I just think together it's not interesting. It's extremely not interesting. To I me. bet you there are interesting parts that are just left on the cutting room floor. It must be. Mm-hmm. They Which must is a say, shame. you know what it is? They have like, I think producers just take, they, they have like blocks. They're like, who is our saccharine couple? Mm-hmm. Who is our drama couple? Who is our fight couple? Yeah. Who is our like real love couple? And yeah. they just edit them so that they're caricatures. Yes. And I do believe. I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt here, but I'm not 100% sure. But I do believe Brandon and Serene fall into that saccharine sweet caricature. Yes, completely agree. So now Genevieve is stressing out because she's not sure what's going to happen with Aaron. And Andy, you said here, very observantly, you said she's never in control. She's always finding out what's next. She's never deciding what's next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that's such a good point because Genevieve has her own thoughts, her own feelings, her own, yeah. you know, she's not just hanging on Aaron's every word. She actually does have her moments of strength, but I don't know why she seems to like put it all on him on what, on the direction things are going to take. She is a submissive in relationships. Okay. So Genevieve and Aaron talk. He says he's conflicted. Hmm. He says he devoted his paradise time to her, that she glows. 
as a person. <laughs> he did fall in love with her. He wouldn't do anything differently, but he says they've gone through ups and downs. And the main issue for him is that whenever something's wrong, she has wanted to leave and literally packed her bags. He says life isn't easy and he needs someone who will stick around. And Andy, you said, but the things that went wrong were because of him. Yeah. Aaron says he needs security. And he says that for that reason, he cannot continue. I wrote, notice how he puts this on her. Thankfully, you she know, does pick up on You know what this, this is? This is a shit sandwich. Yeah. It's a triple decker shit sandwich with Ritz crackers as the bread. <laughs> I like a Ritz cracker. Who doesn't like a Ritz cracker? I mean, a Ritz cracker, that is a decadent flaky, buttery cracker, and I'm into it. Think of how simple a cracker is. Is there any food really more simple than a cracker? And Ritz, somehow, for a hundred years, has been the household name for this very simple, basic, nothing food. Yeah. Think of how much they've mastered the art of the cracker. (laughs) She says nothing here. She just looks at him with a sort of blank expression on her face. And he says, as much as I wish this was going to work, I'm at peace with the fact that it didn't. She continues to say nothing. So finally, he just excuses himself, tells her he wishes her the best, tells her that she looks beautiful that day. (laughs) It's a more, it's a little Ritz cracker. (laughs) (laughs) Just put one in there for good measure. He put put the toothpick in that one. No hug, nothing. He. I, I actually, himself. I actually think there may have been. They, 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 you couldn't see it, but there may have been the attempt at a handshake underneath oh, the really? camera. Oh yeah. man! Oh. I mean, that was really rough. So Genevieve goes to pack, and thankfully, she's very well aware. Victoria comes and joins her, and she tells her, "She's like, he just put it all on me. Yeah, he took no responsibility. He just nothing. said it's all about me wanting to leave, but not didn't yeah. take responsibility for why I wanted mm, to leave." It's on and then, unfortunately, she says, "I need to talk to him about that." Oh, <laughs> it's like in the horror movie when they escape the house, and she's like, "Oh, I forgot my phone." Because like, don't go back in for your phone. You got a new phone. It's all in the cloud anyway. <laughs> So Genevieve and Aaron talk take two. She says he put everything on her. And then classic Aaron response. He says, so it's all my fault. Oh. Uh, I said, I can't take notes of this. Uh. So the, the I, I did take notes, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that dedicated. You took notes about not, <laughs> not being able to yeah, take and notes. And then I took more notes. That's <laughs> diligent. Diligent. He says she doesn't hear what he's saying. And she says, but he also doesn't hear what she's saying. And he was like, oh, no, I do. <laughs> it reminded me of when like she doesn't make me happy or she only makes me happy sometimes i always make her happy yeah. he has no ability to take ownership for his Nothing. contribution to things he's going unable on as genevieve pulls her suitcases out she says third time's a charm Mm, and in the car nice. ride, she says, God forbid he's ever wrong, that little boy. Oh. It makes my brain itch. I just wasted my time on a child, and that's facts. Oh, oh, we loved this exit. Yes. And she did not shed one tear. It was I awesome. I was so impressed with Genevieve here that I forgave all the things that yeah. came before. Yeah. She ended it. That's the way you do paradise. Yeah. You end boom. Mm-hmm. And she just nailed it. She nailed the landing. Yes. It was like she went up. It was like all she knew. It was like the Olympics. You ever see the Olympics where all they need is like a four to win the gold? Like the team gymnastics. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, You're per- like the, the last person's person, yeah. up there. Like, they're like, oh, like, okay, we won. But the person still has to stick a landing of some sort. Yeah. And she literally did like something like a three-year-old would do on a jungle gym <laughs> and then stuck the landing. Like her landing and that's all was, she needed to do. Her landing was spectacular. It's spectacular. Yeah. Like yeah. That's, that's her specialty. They had her go last because they knew they needed a good landing. Everything was terrible. Yeah. The landing was <laughs> brilliant. I felt irrationally proud of yeah, her. I know. I, I was so, she felt like a, like a child, like a child. Yeah. She felt like a, like a like niece. our child, not yeah. our child. Yeah. She but felt she like, also was a little bit she like She felt a like a very distant niece yeah. who makes a lot of bad decisions in love in general. Yeah. And then she did something so badass that you're like, yes. I'm, I'm proud of Genevieve. <laughs> exactly. And that's why to bring it back to what we were just saying earlier, that she's never in control. She's always the one finding out what's next. I really wish that she had been the one to be like, you know what? This isn't right. No. You know, like it felt like she was still the one receiving this breakup. Yeah, she did. But at least at the end, she she, she pulled stuck it the together. Landing. Yeah. 
Okay, so now Danielle and Michael talk. Danielle says she feels so lucky she didn't know it could be like this. He says that since Laura passed, he's struggled giving and receiving love, and ever since, he's been lost, wandering, and numb. He shows her his most important possession now, a compass that he had made. He had gotten three mm. made, right, for Laura himself and for his son James. And engraved inside it is, I find you wherever you are. And he says he thinks the compass brought him to her, to Danielle. And he says he wants her to meet James and that the future feels hopeful. She says that their losses are very different. And her relationship, the one that she lost, she can't look back and say it was healthy and beautiful. But she recognizes that his was and that she honors that. Mm. This, this conversation. It was touching. I mean, I, sh I cried at the end I of this. I saw, yeah. He says Laura would love Danielle and would be happy it's her. This is what got me. This is where I was like. <laughs> oh, no. And they agree they're not ready for an engagement, but they will leave together and stay together. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. I like I have nothing. This no, is just this was really stuff. beautiful. I know the we compass, sort of. Have, this is like a movie. It's a movie. I mean, I know we've questioned this relationship. Well, but I've honestly, questioned. Yeah, I mean, I felt like Michael could break her heart down the road. Yeah, I, I still think that that's probably in the cards. I hate to be that guy, but this was a beautiful and touching scene, and I felt there was sincerity here. So I feel less like he's going to break her heart based on the fact that he said. Laura would love her and would be really happy it's her. It's almost mm. like that sense of approval that it's okay. Yeah. It's not some sort of betrayal. Yeah. I don't think the producers know how they got so lucky. Like you can see now why they've been just having of them on course. this pedestal. I'm not saying that it's fair how things have gone for him. He certainly has gotten, as we've said, the first class treatment, but yeah. You can see why a little. Yeah, I get it. Uh, but, you know, this, I, this I, is I so touching. I trust some of their choices. They seem to have <laughs> done it right this time. So, guess what I did the other day, Charlene? What? Charlene. Oh, yeah, you used my name. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> that never happens. But regardless, I made a doctor's appointment on ZocDoc. Good old ZocDoc. That's the place to make a doctor's appointment, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. And that's because not only can you filter doctors who are in close proximity, so it's convenient, but also you can even gauge whether or not they take your insurance, like you can literally filter that out, and whether or not they can see you when you need to be seen. And whether or not people like them. Yes, that's a big one. A lot of people. Patient reviews. A lot of reviews. You know when you go on Google and you look for a doctor and sometimes there's like one review mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, this guy must be a joke. ZocDoc, always a lot of reviews. Yes. You notice that? And crowdsourcing is never wrong. Never wrong. When you have hundreds of reviews, I'm sorry that you really do get a good gist of whether Absolutely. or not they're good. Absolutely. Hundreds of five-star reviews versus hundreds of one-star reviews. Like that is just so much more information than one five-star review. Yeah, they could have just paid their cousin to give the review. <laughs> True. So ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Shandy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash Shandy, ZocDoc.com slash Shandy. Okay, so the only remaining couples now are Johnny and Victoria and Brandon and Serene, Jesse tells them they can just relax. The next day is overnights and that night will be a fancy dinner. And mm -hmm. here, Andy, I turned to you and asked if you would propose to me in that setting and you said, no, too soon. <laughs> was it four weeks, five weeks? Yeah, I'm not saying something because I mean, I think, you know, we are sort of the poster children for you proposing pretty quickly but after five months. But also it's a, it's not a realistic environment. I need to see you in like a normal environment. Yeah. I need to wake up and, you know, have mm -hmm. you having trouble on the toilet or something, you know, <laughs> real stuff. <laughs> the two couples have a fancy meal where they actually eat now and they name their most memorable moments. Highlights are Brandon and Serene peeing across from each other in the pool. Yeah. Their defense is that no one else was in the pool, but I actually... Don't think this is totally cool. No, no, no. I think this is something you don't say. <laughs> I think the ocean is different and a shower is oh, different because the there's a drain. Fine. Everyone it's all pees about in the, ocean. the drain. Yeah. Where does the where's the pee go in the pool? Where is it going? Goes in the pool. And then people got in that pool. They probably swallowed some water. Yeah. What it is is a practical joke. What should be said after that story is, ah, I gotcha. <laughs> Victoria fondly recalls Johnny calling her Caroline and Brandon reflects on seeing Serene for the first time in that dress, that red dress, or yeah. sorry, this is her memory. He was like, oh, it was like, I felt like I just, it was like I was your father seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, they all acknowledged that this was hilarious and then he recovered. So we just, we don't need to comment on that. Yeah. Serene says, normally when I fall in love, it hits me in the face. Uh, this is funny in the same way as Brittany being like, I haven't felt this way in two and a half years. <laughs> Normally when I fall in love, Johnny says Victoria's his person. Brandon says we are both very extremely lucky to be in the presence That's of so lucky. two incredible That's like women. the most lucky. That's like a black hole of luckiness. <laughs> It's singularity. We now see another casting call for Senior Bachelor. And Andy, you said that it's just an ongoing joke. There is no show. Is it? It's like a, is it a, joke? a years long April Fool's that there's one Senior if Bachelor. If it's really a joke and they're committing to it, I almost respect the joke. But if it's not a joke, let's get on with it. That would be a better show. I wonder if they're having a hard time casting it. I bet you they are. Well, you got a lot of close-ups. You got a lot of close-ups. HD close-ups. You think that plays a role That's a problem. You got to find like old people who look sharp on camera. (laughs) Sharp. Yeah. Sharp, that's something my dad would say. Well, it is. I mean, well, we're talking about seniors, right? So I'm speaking senior (laughs) language. But you got people, you got got the the crust in the corner of the mouth, the saliva that just never goes away. You got a heavy nose hairs. You got ear hairs. Yeah. And I guess you need to find older people who are not going steady in relationships currently. So they're single enough to come on. Nice. Nice. What makes me upset about you saying that is that when I was a young, young man, I said going steady. (laughs) So I'm not happy with that. Going steady always makes me think of Archie comics. Yeah. Or or, uh, an item. They're an item. Yeah, I guess that's kind of old. Okay, so now it's the next day. Brandon and Serene have their overnight. Brandon says, I'm so glad I found you in my life. She says she's so appreciative of how he trusts her with his heart. Continuing to speak fluent Hallmark card. Mm -hmm. He says he'll love her for the rest of her life. She'll never have to do this again. They make out a lot and Mm -hmm. head to the fantasy suite and then make out a lot there. And we marveled here at how comfortable they are making out with a camera inches away from them. Andy, you said it's like porn. No different. I mean, they were like up in it and the camera was like right here. You can make a case that it's even more hardcore than porn. But in porn, it's like there's no emotion in it. Mm. You're just like, you just, it's like meat. But they're actually showing deep emotion and passion on camera without there being an actual movie. Yeah. It's, it's really is true porn. <laughs> You know what's funny is I think you've made this point before. You always find this to be very porny. Well, well, there's cameras right there. Yeah, and they're on the bed and it's what's suggested. It's a fancy suite. It's like, what are they going to do after the cameras leave? Yeah, you got to be a little bit of an exhibitionist to want to make out passionately with a cameraman literally six feet from your face. Yeah, and now there's a hilarious shot of Brandon heading to close the door. Yeah, very serious. His game face is on. (laughs) It's like, I'm not playing games anymore. The real Brandon's coming out. (laughs) Watch out, Serene. Johnny and Victoria now have their overnight. He says he's nervous and it's clear she's the one with the power in this relationship. We continue to feel this way. She says he's altered what she thought a man looked like. He asks about her fears. She says her biggest fear is being abandoned. And she has traditionally gone for emotionally unavailable men. And he reveals he's very hard on himself. He looks in the mirror and hates everything about himself. Mm. This was pretty heartbreaking to hear. He says he's never felt worthy. I mean, I got to say I can relate a lot to Johnny's self-loathing. I think we both can. Yeah. Johnny has a lot of self-loathing in him. And as much as I wish it were different, it also in that way you commiserate with someone over something that you wish neither of you had. I appreciate that about him. Oh, yeah. He's the opposite of, of having an inflated ego. We'll put it that way. I think Johnny is a great BIP candidate. He, he really I, is. He's, a, he's exactly what they should be casting is a very outwardly impressive player, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah. But really inside 
a bit of a, of a complicated, fragile, and slightly broken man. Yeah. You can see how he and Logan ended up becoming very close totally. throughout this process. Yeah. Like versus him and like Aaron. How good is vulnerability? Like uh, how and real I'm not saying about you know when people talk about being vulnerable. Yeah, or like Aaron's like, oh, I'm gonna cry now, vulnerable. Yeah, no, no, no. That's bullshit. How like in the movies, everything. You know why I don't like Marvel movies? Because it's all bullshit. Everybody's evil is purely evil. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's good is so good. Yeah. Like they got everything figured out. They everything is great. And there's one old lady who's having a problem somewhere and it's gonna cost them everything to help her out. And of course they got it. They're going to die. Their whole fucking life is going to be ruined. Yeah. I don't like that. It's mm -hmm. not interesting. It's, it's not, not realistic. It's not interesting at all. Yeah. Nuance. I want someone who's bad, who's good, who's in the middle, who's nice, who's mean, who loves, who hates. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Yeah. That's what everyone wants to see. And that's what everyone is. Let's be honest. That's what everyone is. Everyone is. Like, I have days where I'm like, I'm really nice. And then I have like bitchy days. Like, I have bad days. I have days where I don't want to have to engage. I don't want to have to be on. And we all have dark thoughts. Even the nicest, nicest people, once in a while, they press door close on the elevator when they're making believe to press door <laughs> open. Victoria says he's enough. She loves him. And they both say they've never felt as comfortable. She says she can see herself marrying him. And he stresses the commitment of an engagement. And she says she's beyond ready. And he continues to show a little hesitation here. And he makes it clear he wouldn't propose just because he felt pressure to or because she wants him to. I really appreciate that he said this. Like, of course, you could argue he's managing expectations. But also, I think that that's the right way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's never been sure about this. And I think that's more than fair because they've never been together in the real world. You want to see reality TV? Look at Johnny. That's real. Yeah. Isn't and that funny? Logan. And, <laughs> and they're close friends. Okay, Andy, that's the end of episode 15, which brings us to our credits, which is basically moths attacking the final four people yeah. at dinner. This was actually really funny. Yeah, a big moth. Yeah, it was particularly funny when Serene was laughing at how Victoria handled it and then a moth swooped down yeah. on her. It was pretty good. Okay, Andy, your A game. Who wins your A game this week? I have a shared prize this oh, week. Oh, can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Johnny and Logan. Oh, no. oh, Genevieve and Logan. You're getting warmer. Genevieve and Johnny? Nope. <laughs> Genevieve? Genevieve for sure. The way she handled that breakup the was landing, just... The landing, that she stuck that landing, oh, yeah. Just, and from her, yes. from her especially, yeah. it was just delightful to watch that. Mm -hmm. Not one tear shed. Yeah. That's what I liked about it the most. Yeah. Good for her. Number two, I know you're going to think this is weird, but I'm going to give Victoria some A game here. Okay. Because she has mastered the art of, as 38 Special, you don't know, it's an 80s one-hit wonder, said... Hold on loosely, but don't let go. She's mastered that art. She knows exactly how to hold the person she wants without Gripping. breaking them. Mm. And she did it well this episode. Yeah. She expressed her feelings about what she wants and how serious she is. But at the same time, it felt like there was air there. There was space for him to just breathe. Mm -hmm. She's great at that. Yeah. And I don't like to call this game because this was very sincere, but Michael's compass speech mm. was, I mean, if that's not a game, I mean, it's not game. Again, game gets a bad name. It's, a game doesn't mean you're playing a game, you're tricking somebody. Yeah. It's just smoothness, basically. I th yeah, I think the that game was for tremendous. you is an umbrella statement for, for possibly being that, for playing a game. Doing things that really help you in romantic engagements. Okay. <laughs> whatever that is. Okay. If it's trying to sleep with somebody or trying to marry someone. Okay. It's whatever you, you know how to play that the game okay life is a game okay so that brings us to word watch andy we uh, we said last week that this would be episodes 15 and 16 or parts one and two of the yeah. finale combined and there were no fingers in this episode None. so that means that any to be continued fingers will have to happen tonight yep. and finally who would we go for based on episode 15 i mean victoria for me Okay, that's not surprising. Yeah. She's been on and off your who we would go for list for ages now. She's you know what it is. It's like you're at the club. It's like two a.m. There's no one left. <laughs> She's it's a very good no one left. Yeah, definitely. But but what I'm saying is I the people who I previously had gone for 
are gone or gone from my heart or the show. Yes. <laughs> and she's a strong candidate. She so is. Victoria it is. I respect that. For me, part of me wants to go for Johnny because I want to lift him up. But I also think we're a little too similar. Mm. Like we're both a little too self loathy yeah, I can see that. And so I would go for Logan. Thank you. That's who I would approve you going for. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a wrap for this recap if you enjoyed what you heard today you know what we will ask of you and that is to like subscribe hit the notification bell follow us on instagram and tiktok leave us apple and spotify podcast ratings and reviews and generally do all of the things that you would do to support a podcast you enjoy thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow on dear shandy bye-bye dear shandy